15 and going into schools like we do and training as many children as we've trained. One of the first things I talked about is really setting their goals. What is your goal, your future? What do you want to do for your uh, the school? What do you want to do for a job? And in so many of the kids today want to be YouTube stars. And so we, we've got a special guest today to really walk through what it takes to be a YouTube star, how you, how the hurdles you have to get over. And also, you know, you know, what really, uh, what things you have to do on social media and how you have to re represent yourself. And so we have Tyler Pappas, better known as Log.Zip. And Tyler, I'm going to jump over here and, and show people your YouTube channel. Sure. Uh, 4. Howdy. 3, 4 million subscribers. That's awesome, man. <laughs> Thank you. I appreciate it. Yes, it's been a long journey. That is awesome. And we we're talking before we started here is, is one of the reasons I really wanted to reach out to you is because I've got five children of my own. So nine, nine, seven, five, and five. And, Ooh. and they, yeah, I know it's, I had hair at one point. It's kind of gone now. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> yeah, it is definitely. But, you know, my children like to watch YouTube and my, and especially my older three like, uh, to play Minecraft. So we've got them on a kind of coding, uh, program so they can code through Minecraft and they'll actually sit there and watch your videos while they're coding and, and try to do different things. So and it's we run through so so many different YouTube people that you know they start off fine but you know they end up getting kind of dark or they kind of get adult and some of the things they do. But with your channel, we've never had a problem with what your your content, things you're saying. It's always been very family friendly. Uh, and I appreciate that. So can I uh, for people who don't know who you are, can you kind of just give a uh, little little history about how you got to be uh, 4.3 million subscribers. Sure, absolutely. And, and, and thanks again for having me. Uh, gosh, it all started uh, when I was 14 years old. Uh, I'm 29 now. So when I was 14, I uh, was playing a lot of online games and uh, YouTube was a fairly recent website. And I would oftentimes go on there and see if there was anyone else making videos on the games I was playing, guides on how to beat the boss or on how to get the best item. And, and uh, you know, it kind of inspired me to say, hey, that could be fun. Maybe I can share some of my gaming experiences on YouTube as well and, and begin, you know, finding uh, an audience of like-minded people who also enjoy what I do. And I started posting gaming videos. And then I eventually switched over to a game that you may have heard of called Minecraft. And yes. um, at that point, um, I just kept making videos, having fun with it. And slowly but surely, um, my following online started to grow. Uh, Google acquired YouTube and suddenly um, the platform was monetized. So you could begin uh, getting compensated, making money for the content you were uh, producing. And, you know, it was just a, a slow but steady climb of just more followers, more viewers, more opportunity to allow this to become a job. And. And it was right around, um, gosh, probably seven years after I began where it became uh, enough of an opportunity for me to consider my options of a more traditional route, uh, a normal job, or to pursue my dream that was um, YouTube and decided to go down that path. And eventually I started earning enough for it to go from just being um, some movie money and, and maybe some French fries on the side to, oh, it's a real job now. And then that uh, continued to evolve until I got to a point where it was a true career option, right? There's jobs and then there's careers. And for me, the moment it became a career was really the moment I uh, turned what I was doing into a business, a small business, and you know had some people on my team that were helping me um, make this uh, more legitimized, more of a reality, easier on me in some regards, harder in other areas. And, you know, so we fast forward to today. I've got like five or six YouTube channels. We've got about 25 staff and, uh, you know, we're loving every second of it. Now that is, that is awesome. So when, uh, when I'm talking to a fifth grader said, I want to be a YouTube star. I just want to play video games all day. It's not exactly what the uh the, how you no. become a successful youtuber correct that is absolutely correct there's way more to it unfortunately than just playing video games or maybe fortunately because i've learned a lot of important life lessons and skills that come outside of just playing video games and i still get to play video games here and there there's no <laughs> doubt about that but um i would say today if i am working let's say 40 hours in a given week 
I would say probably only six hours of that are playing video games. The rest are meetings, logistics, planning, um, you know, uh, developing uh, interpersonal connections with other people on the team, making sure things are running smoothly, looking ahead at the upcoming year or two years, um, you know, even writing out uh, scripts and developments for, you know, the videos we make. But, um, hey, I'll take any job where I still get to play games six hours a week. <laughs> that's, that's not bad at all. Not bad at all. No, sir. So let me ask you this. Like I said before, the your, your program is definitely very family friendly. What kind of made you go down that path versus uh, other path that other people have, have taken? Yeah, well, you know, originally I was uh, an angsty teenager and I definitely had my moments where I wasn't making the best decisions or I was, you know, speaking inappropriately. And, and you know, uh, oftentimes people change and can grow out of that and can have things that occur in their life that make them say, hey, what if there was a better way to do this? And one of the big catalysts for that for me was um, when I really started my YouTube journey in a serious way. And that was around the time I was 20 or 21 years old, still recording videos at my parents' house because I lived with them. And I had a very young uh, nine-year-old sister who I shared a wall with. And I actively made the decision of, hey, I don't necessarily want my little sister hearing inappropriate language, inappropriate themes, innuendos, anything related to that. So why don't I take some responsibility for myself, clean up my act, and 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 present myself in a, in, a, in a more appropriate way, in a way that I can feel proud of, knowing that uh, other nine year olds out there who aren't my sister are not being alienated by the language I use, by the things I talk about. Instead, rather focusing on more of a positive environment and fostering, you know, healthy online conversation and community. Excellent. Actually, speaking of kind of that healthy conversation, I'm sure, and I know I've, I've seen some of the comments in, in your videos that you deal with trolls sometimes. You deal with people who are just really just mean to be trolls. mean, whatever their, their issues are. Uh, most likely they have own, their own personal issues that are taken out on other people. How, how do you handle that situation when you have something like that happen? Well, as, I, as I've um, grown the channels with my team, um, it's become harder and harder to lend as much attention to that negativity. When I was first starting out, I didn't have as many commenters. I didn't have as many people engaging with me. So it was really easy for me to latch on to all of those external comments and commentaries that other people were contributing towards my content, giving me thoughts, uh, maybe attacking my videos, attacking me personally, attacking my character, all those different things. And, and it, it's kind of what you said there, Mike, which is that, you know, some of these people leaving comments are, you know, they're hurting inside, right? There's something that isn't sitting right in their life. And, you know, they are maybe falling victim to some of their own troubles. And mm -hmm. that's one that's always been important for me to realize is every single time someone wrongs you or says something poor to you um, is an opportunity to either return that and escalate the situation in a negative way, or it's an opportunity to, you know, turn the other cheek and, you know, present them with, you know, what they need to get out of their system, whether it's to find relief or to come at peace in their own way, um, but to do it in a positive way, right? Uh, respond to them with a smile. Hey, I'm sorry you're going through that. Like, um, I appreciate your feedback. Um, I'll be sure to make my video better next time. Uh, you know, take what they have to say with a certain filter of knowing that, Hey, not only are they having some troubles, we can maybe even assume that. I, I, I dare say everyone has troubles in life. Who'd have thought? Um, <laughs> I'd say I'd say so. But the other one is, um, you know, they are also lacking key information about what's going on in your own personal life as well. And they're coming to conclusions about what is going on in your life or through your content based on a lack of information. You know, I was just talking to a friend recently. I don't know how many of you are out there driving yet, but, uh, you know, people speed on the highway. And, you know, that can be frustrating when, you know, they're putting yourself, your family in danger or maybe you'd like to speed too to get to work on time, but you're not and you are abiding by the law. And so I always think, okay, well, what if, what if there's uh, a pregnant mom in the car and they're rushing to the hospital? Or what if, 
you know, there's a, a, a birthday cake that needs to be delivered and it's late. And I don't necessarily condone speeding, but I always attribute to people um, the greatest possible excuse for them I can think of to try and excuse that behavior because I don't have the full story. And that really lets me come to peace. And so just know that when these people are leaving comments, these trolls, they don't have the full story. They've got their own stuff going around in their own life. And it's just better to just approach with a smile, give them a thank you, you know, say sorry if you feel compelled to, and just do your best to ignore them because it's really easy to focus in on the negative in, in place of all of the positive that you'll be getting along the way as well. Excellent, excellent advice. You know, you're speak, speaking to how you kind of represent yourself online. And today, you know, we, we've always heard about brands like, you know, you see a Pepsi logo or Coke logo, you know what those are. But today, so many, so many people really have their own personal brand, just like you. You have your own personal brand of what you're doing and, and, and you represent yourself. You represent your whole company. And the same thing can kind of be said with kids today. They're building their brand. And I, we say that, you know, you're building your online resume as, right. as everything you're posting online. And, and how, you know, what kind of wisdom can you give uh, young men and women listening today about, about how to build your own personal brand? So the school you go to, you have many options. You know, it's not closed down or the job that you, ha you, you want is available or the person you want to date is, is going to be interested in what you're doing. What kind of advice can you give somebody? Well, to, to begin cultivating your own brand in that sense is, I suppose, being proud of whatever it is you are representing both online and in person. You want to be someone or something that people want to rally behind. You want them to champion what it is you're doing. And so you oftentimes have to question, you know, what it is you're doing and constantly check and reassess like, hey, is what I'm producing something I'm proud of. Am I putting my full efforts into this as often as possible? Am I making something worth discussing? Am I presenting my life in a way worth presenting? Am I misbehaving? Am I causing problems? Am I stirring up trouble? Am I being dramatic? Am I gossiping? Am I doing all of these things? And that's more from a personal brand, you know, yourself as an individual brand. Uh, you know, there is that idea of reputation that you have to keep in mind. And so, you know, it's, it's better. I mean, I feel as though, you know, we are called to be good people and it can be so tempting to engage in that malicious behavior. Sometimes there is certainly a sense of instant gratification that can sometimes come with, you know, being that negative Nancy for a day or just, you know, <laughs> wanting to ruffle up feathers. And it's not always the most fun option. But if you're looking to cultivate something long term, whether it is uh, the brand that is yourself or the brand that might be your online persona, the product or service you're looking to develop over the next few months or years or many years, you have to really question what that contribution is. Is it a positive one? Or is it a negative one? Now, more specifics to it, you also need to be able to find a way to, um, you know, individualize yourself and make yourself stand out amongst the crowd and make sure that, you know, not only what you're offering is something that's positive, but is also something that you could say the market is in demand for. What does the market desire? You know, a lot of it comes with research, studying looking at trends online. There's all sorts of trends that are always going on and off. TikTok's always got the next dance coming out, or there's always a new type of video style or challenge. And it's about- The new, car the new cartoon faces are, are popping up today. Oh, absolutely. Days. All over the place. It's about knowing when those are happening and being able to Hop on a trend. Um, one thing I've had to learn uh, over lots of trial and error is it is certainly possible to make a trend. It is a little bit easier to jump on a trend and then slightly shift it to be more of your own personal taste so that you can stand out through those slight deviations, but that you can also um, gather interest from the larger audience who is already engaged with this bigger idea, whether it's a meme, a trend, uh, a fad, whatever it is. The brand building comes with a willingness to take what is already popular and give it a little bit of a spin to make it your own. But if you're not giving it that spin, you're not going to stand out. Excellent. And the biggest thing I just heard you say is kind of towards the beginning was the 
you know, be, be mindful of what you represent, whether, you know, it's yourself, your family, your school, your teams, all those different things. That's great, great, great advice. Uh, can you give some advice, speaking of advice to, to somebody who's like, you know, this is what I really want to do as a profession. I just don't want a game, but this is an actual career I'm wanting to kind of start get to get into. Can you give that person some advice? Yeah, absolutely. Well, you have to be very honest with yourself and you have to know that the odds are against you. Um, just like in any job or career prospect, it's there's a lot of work that goes into it. And to your point earlier, it's not just playing video games. It, it, it may seem that way because that's all you see. When you come to my YouTube channel, all you see is me playing video games. But there's so much more planning that goes behind the scenes. We've got script writers, we've got developers, editors, graphic designers, people that help us post, data researchers, everything. A given video on my channel is 15 minutes long and what no one sees is that there's 20 to 30 hours of work that goes into each individual video uh, done by six to eight people on any given video. There's six to eight pairs of hands on this. And so part of being able to jump into this intelligently is to know what you're up against. And if you really want to make this work, right, there's, there's something to be said about jumping into it just because you have a passion for it. And there's nothing wrong with jumping into it for a passion. But if you're really looking to make it a viable job long term, you're going to be doing way more studying than you want to, way more research than you want to. You're going to fail a lot more than you want to, than you thought you were going to. And, and that's just something that I don't know, you should one, accept, but two, kind of be empowered by because every single time you fail, all you've actually, like I consider failures victories because through every failure, I learn something new. I have found out something very important about myself or my process or my team's process. And so you really need to learn to embrace the failures of course, learn from them as well, but you really need to be able to embrace those. And yeah, what I was saying earlier is also very important. You need to find out ways to stand out. What does the market want, right? What kind of videos do you want to make, one, right? But what kind of videos does YouTube want you to make? Does the audience want you to make? Do you want to be a Minecraft gamer? Okay, well, there's a hundred thousand, dare I say millions of other Minecraft gamers out there. What are you doing to stand out against them who by sheer nature of the fact that you haven't maybe started your channel yet or are on your early steps, are you doing the exact same thing as them? How are you ever going to catch up to them in that regard? You need to offer something special and different, whether it's your skill set, whether it's your personality, whether it's the way you structure the content you're trying to make, whether it's your end goal, if it's a challenge, if you have a fun initiative behind it, a charitable cause, you need to do something to differentiate yourself there. And you need to think long term and you need to accept that it's going to be hard. It's going to have a lot of failure associated and that you're going to actually want to pay a lot more attention in school than you might be right now. And even more if you are, because a lot of the things you are learning in your classes today are going to be helping you in very interesting ways down the road in ways you never thought you'd be learning. Man, awesome, awesome advice and awesome interview. Tyler, I do appreciate your time here. Is there, where's the best place for somebody who wants to uh, see what you're doing and kind of, you know, get it? If you want to learn, you know, get learn from the best. So where can they find you to learn? Well, if you want to learn more about what I do online, uh, the best place to do that would be at my YouTube channel. It's youtube.com slash log.zip. If you click that channels link as well, when you visit the page, you'll also see our numerous other YouTube channels we have, Alex the Noob, Comments to Crafting. Um, you know, those are some of the ones that we are routinely posting to right now. Look out for some future ones uh, in the very near future. And if you are looking to find out more about Tyler as a person, I've got my Instagram and my Twitter, which are both usernames are log.zip. And that's more of a peek into Tyler's life outside of just what you see online. And if you want to find out more about the uh, business side of things, well, um, 
turn 18 <laughs> and then come check out our job postings online where you can see a whole different side of what uh, log.zip is and of what content creation is. Awesome. And when you do come here, that little orange button there, be an awesome hey. thing to get as well. <laughs> I appreciate Got it. Got another one. <laughs> All right. Excellent, my man. Well, I appreciate you being here. Like I said, uh, you are the only YouTuber I know that uh, we allow uh, free reign, basically, with our kids to watch any of your videos. So, again, thank you for what you're doing. Thank you for making it uh, family friendly and helping us keep our kids safe. My pleasure, Mike. Thank you for having me.